Hey y'all, it's Wendy, and today I am wishing away the heat here in Central Florida and was inspired by the snowy elements in Frozen. I'm channeling my inner Elsa, y'all. Let's crank down that AC and escape to a wintry wonderland. I'm combining the bokeh technique in icy blues for my background and die cutting loads of snowflakes. Do you want to build a snowman? Snowy the Snowman will be at the center of my winter card today. But for all you Cricut crafters, stay tuned because Olaf himself will be making his Christmas card debut. Let's start with the bokeh technique. It's really a photography technique that's been translated into ink. Basically, it's a soft, out of focus background. Ours will feature circles, but you can choose any shape you like. Stars or diamonds would be a great choice here as well. Let's get crafting. I begin with a piece of watercolor cardstock and some Distress Oxide inks in Uncharted Mariner, Salty Ocean, and Faded Jeans. I begin by ink blending my background. I'm going to go from the lightest color down to the darkest color. I am going to continue to layer up that color and go over each of the lines to blend them in, but my, my goal is to make sure that my background is as opaque as possible. It needs to be dark so that the white circles that we're going to do next show up better. Disney began decorating Cinderella's castle with icicle lights to look like snow and ice back in 2007, and every night during the holiday season, Fairy Godmother would help light up the sky. But in 2014, the castle got a frozen update, and Elsa took over the castle lighting show. Now that Disney World is celebrating its 50th anniversary, the castle has gotten yet another bold update. It's now decorated in rose pink and paired with lots of gold touches in honor of the princess herself. Now that my panel is dry, I'm going to be using some Tim Holtz stencils with varying sizes of circles and Hero Arts white pigment ink to fill those circles in. Some of you may notice that I made a pretty big mistake when I used the white ink directly from the pad. It ended up transferring the blue ink from the background onto the white pad. So ultimately I end up changing that to just inking up the back of, a, of an acrylic block and ink blending from there. Continue placing as many circles as you want until your background is the way that you like it. Mine's pretty full of white circles. I wanted to kind of make it diffuse and you'll see why I did that towards the end. I've selected Penny Black stamps called Snowy. I absolutely love this little guy. He is so cute. I'm gonna stamp him out in some VersaFine Black Onyx ink and then do some clear embossing. The reason I've chosen to do some clear embossing is because I don't wanna smudge any of his exterior lines before I die cut him out. You'll notice that I am embossing on top of a piece of cardboard that's covered with aluminum foil. I cut that piece of cardboard to be about six by six, and then I heat emboss on top of that. 
I got that little trick from Ardeth. And honestly, it works fantastic. I find that I don't end up as much um, with warpage of my cardstock when I'm heat embossing as opposed to when I just heat emboss uh, on my glass mat or on any other surface. All right, it's time to color snowy. I've decided to use a vivid red alcohol marker, but honestly, you can use whatever you have. Crayola would have been perfect as well. I am going to give his scarf some color as well as the top of his hat. Now I'm using a gray marker to give Snowy some shadow and kind of ground him to the paper. I didn't have any pink markers that I particularly cared for, so I've opted to use some Festive Berries Distress Oxide ink with my water brush to color in his nose and give his cheeks a little rosy glow. While Snowy is super cute the way that he is, I decided to decorate his scarf a little. So I found a teeny tiny little snowflake stamp in my stash and I'm using the Hero Arts White Pigment Ink again. And I'm going to emboss that with white powder this time so that it stands up off the page. Time to make snowflakes. So I've chosen three different colors of paper, a holographic silver, a pearl white, and a pearl light blue. The white and the blue were not pearl originally. I used some metallic folk art paint and covered it to get the colors that I was looking for. I then used four different snowflake dies that I had in my stash. They each measured about an inch, but they were all different and I ended up cutting out about 16 in the various color cardstock. I'm using some foam tape to pop Snowy up since I glued down the snowflakes to make them flat. 
I'd like to take a minute to say that if you found inspiration from my video, please hit the like button, share my video, and subscribe to my channel. I really do appreciate it. My base is made from Accent Opaque Heavyweight 110 pound paper. I can't find that anymore, so I'm gonna have to use something else in the future but I did use a top folding card and I just adhered it straight to the base. I absolutely love how he came out. So here are my finished cards. I actually made two different versions, as you can see. I colored Snowy's hat just slightly different, but I absolutely love how they both came out. And for you Cricut crafters, I did not forget you. Olaf is about to make his debut. I hope y'all enjoyed my Snowy the Snowman Christmas card as much as I did, and I hope it inspired you to create your own. In the comments below, please let me know what your favorite character is. And for you Cricut crafters, head over to the next video, part two, to see how I made the same card, but featuring Olaf. See you real soon.